Hi, my name is Song. I'm the creator of Tower Defense Toolkit. In this video, I'm going to talk about the editors of the toolkit. Right, let's get started. So, if we look at this top panel here, we have six editors. Um, I'm going to start with those that matter the most, those which the editing stuff would affect the whole project. Um, so that's resource editor. And uh, it seems simple, it is. Because uh, you add a new resource by uh, clicking a new resource and you delete it by doing so, right? And the thing is, you should remember you need to save before the change take effect. So let's just do some change for testing sake. So let's name this money. Oop, got my caps on. Right, let's save. And immediately you see the resource manager here updates. Um, it adds a third element to it right so um, this is true for all the other component which rely on resource as well such as spawn editor and where you modify how much each wave gives you um, when you clear it right now you see resources so if I delete that Oh, sorry, open the wrong one. So if I delete this, save, see it's no longer there. So if I go to spawn editor again, it's gone. So that's it. It's gonna be like that for all the projects. So basically what you define here is gonna be used throughout the whole project. Right, so it affects the tower cost as well, pretty much everything. Everything that has to do with resource is going to use that tree value there. So, right, let's move on to the next one, uh, which is tower manager. It works pretty much the same way as the resource manager. In effect, it means whatever you have here is going to be available for the build manager to build for the whole project, right, as long as you enable it. So if you have a tower prefab but you didn't add it to the tower manager it won't appear on the build manager right so let's just add a prefabs um, let's say support tower right you see you add a tower um, i'm sorry i forgot this um, you add a tower by dragging a prefabs into this slot here trying to do this but as soon as I click on this it went missing so I have to do it off screen unfortunately which I just done uh, with the support tower so let's do one again um, resource tower so there you go that's another one there so if you want to remove a tower simply do that right so now we have done it if you look at the build manager it updates itself so just now it was only three now it has four and you can disable and enable this and it applies for all the build manager across all the scene you have as well as all the build platform so if you have a build platform uh, component assigned we'll get to that later um, so that's tower editor and needless to say it affects tower editor as well so Whatever you have in the tower manager, you can edit in tower editor. Otherwise, it, you won't be able to edit them. So, yeah, for any user of previous version, yep, this is a bit of a change. You don't longer assign individual prefabs to the build manager where the build editor only edit whatever in the build manager. And there you go, that's the new stuff. And which brings us to the next one, which is damage armor table so this is entirely optional mode, to be honest uh, it lets you to it lets you add uh, some strategic element to your tower and creep damage mechanism basically what it says here is type A damage will do 100% damage to type X armor and will only do 50% damage to type Y armor so this is what you can modify so essentially you can create a tower which is specific uh, which is specially effective against one creep type while totally ineffective against another so 
Yeah, so this is what it's for. You can edit the name of the damage um, as well as the armor, give a description, anything. Um, this is just for your own record and you can add new armor as well, needless to say. So it's pretty straightforward, self-explanatory to be honest. And again, you have to press save in order to, for the change to take effect, otherwise you lost all the change. And that's it. So let's bring us to the next one, which is Perk Editor. Um, this is applicable globally as well, but I'm not going to go into this in detail because I plan to do another video to talk about this in great detail. So let's skip that for now. And then we have the Tower Editor. This as well, I'm going to talk about it in another video when we talk about how to build a tower prefabs. And so we'll skip that for now. And then finally, Spawn Editor. So this is the special one. Uh, what it difference is, it doesn't edit anything globally. What it does is, it's only an additional interface for you to modify this guy over here, basically. So imagine you have many many waves and each wave has many many sub wave so it's going to be a nightmare going through all this so this is what it's for so you can look at everything in a glance so yeah that's much more easier isn't it so this is what it's for in a nutshell and it is like what it says on the surface and you have your spawn mode right it's pretty much self-explanatory if you're not sure what's what just check the documentation and the default path right this is this is where it needs a bit of explanation as you can see some of the scene in example scene i'm trying to open one um yeah here yeah. you have more than one path Look at here, you have two. So, how do you know which wave of subwave is going to go to one or the other path? So, this is what this assignment comes in here. You have one default path, and then in each subwave, you can de de define another alternate path. If you leave it blank, it will just follow the default path. If you get it something like path 2, it will follow the second path, you will follow this path, right? So that's pretty much it. So that's the trick about it. And the thing is, um, because it edits only this spawn manager alone, so when you switch level, it might not reload. So this is where this update button comes in. It will refresh itself otherwise it won't right in case in the event of which the spawn editor refused to update itself you can either close it and reopen it or update and in case you haven't got any spawn manager in the scene it will simply go blank yep so that's pretty much it and yeah when you edit the spawn manager you don't need to save in the editor per se but you are basically edit something some asset in the scene so you will have to save that level and that's pretty much it for the editor um yeah we skip this too of course but we'll cover it in another video and i'll stop the video right here thanks for watching